Everyone, Disturb Shadow here to bring you a brand new album review. Today we'll be discussing the brand new album that just released from the Welsh metal band Bullet For My Valentine. Now, if you're a fan of this band, like me, you were probably a little bit disappointed by their last effort, Temper Temper, which a lot of people just thought was just a bad album. I thought it was just okay, but there was nothing really on it that stood out to me. And I actually intended to review it last or back in 2013 when it came out, but I never got around to it. And then after it was sort of just a meh album, I just didn't really give it a good listen. So I just sort of passed it by. But then this year they're putting it, they started promoting the new album and I gave it I decided to check out the new tracks and I was surprised that this is a lot better than sort of the direction I have been going in where, in my personal opinion, ever since their debut debut album The Poison, which is one of the first albums that really got me into metal in the first place, back when I was in middle school when it first came out, they've sort of been progressively getting not as good. Like, their second album, Scream Out of Fire, I love that album, but I don't think it was as good as The Poison. And then Fever, again, was still a pretty good album, but just wasn't as good as Scream Out of Fire was. And then Temper Temper, I just, I didn't like it at all. I just thought it felt like uh, a bunch of unpolished B-side tracks from the Fever sessions. I mean, it had almost the identical uh, production on all the instruments, and the, the tracks just felt like they were ones that were cut from fever and for good reason they just didn't feel like they were they felt like they were missing something but now we're in 2015 and we've got a brand new album called venom which has sort of gotten mixed reviews from critics but if you're the same kind of bullet from a valentine fan that i am this is the album you have been waiting for ever since maybe like scream and fire era stuff it feels really similar to that but with a lot of stuff from the poison mixed into the mix and then even some of the stuff that did work well from fever and temper temper style stuff mixed in there to produce what i think is probably one of the best bullet from a valentine uh, bullet from a valentine albums yet i haven't decided exactly where it falls in terms of my favorites but i think it's still a very very good album so anyway enough of that let's just jump in and talk about the tracks on this album the first track is a short one and a half minute noise track pretty much called V which is nothing more than an intro for the second track which is pretty much the first track and this is the thing that kind of annoys me or a lot of bands make these short intro tracks which aren't worth listening to on their own but when you put them together with the the track they're an intro for it works really well and I wish they just make them one track and maybe just for like the single release not include the intro bit but it is what it is so V feeds right into No Way Out, which is the first single they released off of this album, which is just a really solid track that sort of shows off the change in style from Temper Temper back to a more thrashy sort of style that they sort of started going towards with Scream and Fire. And it's just a really solid track and a great way to start off this album. is just all the way through a solid. It's a really heavy, but crunchy guitars, but... A lot of melody mixed in there too, and then Matt Tuck's full vocals are just super solid. It's just a really great way to introduce the new Bullet from Valentine's sound, which is found on this album. Track number three, Army of Noise, is just a straight up thrash track. It's just so many great thrashy riffs throughout the whole track. The lyrics are kind of a little bit cheesy, it's sort of about uh, the energy at a show, but. It's not as cheesy as a lot of the lyrics that were found on uh, Temper Temper, so that's something. I think they've sort of gone back to their old school uh, lyrical content that they had on their first two albums. And Anyway, like I said, this is a really thrashy track. It's got a really shreddy sort of guitar solo, and then, like I said, really great thrash riffs and drums. Just overall, it's a really solid uh, track that really shows off the thrashy side of Bullet Fry Valentine, and they do a great job with it. Track 4, Worthless, is just a slower, more melodic track. It still has those really heavy, crunchy riffs, but they take a much more melodic, slowed, pulled-back approach on this, and it works really well. Track number 5, You Want a Battle, and then parentheses, Here's a War, which is probably my favorite track on this album. It starts off with sort of uh, the gang vocal type thing, where they get like a whole, it sounds like a whole crowd at a show singing the chorus, and then it comes in with Matt Tuck coming in with a big, heavy scream before they bring in the instrumentals and stuff like that and it's just a really cool way to start off the track and just lyrically it's just a really powerful song and I love how everything comes together and how they blend in the 
uh, crowd vocals again later in the song on the final choruses. And just there's so much power and emotion in this song, and they they executed it really well. And like I said, it's my personal favorite track on this album because it's just something about it is just really amazing to me. Track number six, "Broken," is another more thrashier track, but it's a bit more melodic than "Army of Noise" was. And it's there's nothing too special going on here, but it's still a really solid track. Definitely worth checking out. Track number seven, the title track, "Venom." What I really like about this song is sort of a more melodic type of the thing. On the on the on the verses, they sort of have this uh, more clean guitar tone with some effects on it. It sounds really cool. And then they bring in the heavy distorted guitars in the chorus. It's just a really neat track. It's sort of a very melodic type of track, and a uh, chorus that makes you really want to sing along with it. It's got the really catchy hooks in it, and it just pulls you in. It's just a really solid track overall. Track number eight, The Harder the Heart, and then in parentheses, The Harder It Breaks. This is another more melodic yet pretty thrashy track. There's a lot of great uh, melodic guitar playing on this, on the lead side of things. and just Especially the end, there's this part with these harmonized lead guitars fading out, it sort of reminds me of stuff they did on the Poison, like, it really reminds me of the ending of the track, The End, which was the closing track for the Poison on the standard edition, it's just, it just sort of evokes that same sort of emotional feel to it that I really enjoy, that's a really great way to end this track. Track number nine, Skin, which is another personal favorite of mine, it just starts off with this really very melodic guitar uh, shredding bit really pulls you into the track and then it's just these really sort of heavy but really catchy uh, rhythm riffs and the chorus on this track is just really it's really simple but it's really catchy and really melodic and just pulls you in and just this makes you really want to uh, sing along with this track and it just keeps getting stuck in my head every time I listen to it it's just a really solid track overall and it's got probably the best guitar solo on this album it's shreddy but it's also really melodic at the same time which is sort of how this song works overall and it just it works really well and I really enjoy this track. Track number 10, Hell or High Water, which is another sort of more melodic yet still thrashy track. It's just a really solid track overall. There's nothing too crazy going on here but it's definitely worth a listen. Pariah, the final track on the standard edition, track number 11. This is another really thrashy track. It's probably one of the more thrashy tracks on the album. Probably the only track that's thrashier than Pariah is Army of Noise. And just, this is just a really good track overall. And this is one of the tracks where the drumming really stood out to me. There's lots of crazy stuff and a lot of mix of more simplistic stuff, yet still pretty complex in the choruses, and then sort of a lot more heavy, fast-paced, thrashy type of drumming in the verses. And it just comes together really nicely for a great way to end this track. And I do want to just quickly talk about the bonus tracks on the deluxe edition, especially because the first one, track number 12, Playing God, was released ahead of time on their Vivo channel. And I actually thought it was one of the regular tracks, and I was surprised that it turned out to be a bonus track. But anyway, it's just a really good track. It's more hard rock type of song, but it's still got those heavy, crunchy riffs in it. And it's a lot more melodic. What I really like about this track is that the bass actually uh, really stands out. There are, there are a few moments where it's turned up really loud, and it's doing this pretty uh, catchy little bass bit that really stood out to me. It gave this song that extra little oomph to be that much better. Track number 13, Run For Your Life, is another really, really thrashy track. But it's very melodic on the vocals, but there's a lot of great screams mixed in there to to just give it that classic bullet for my Valentine feel, the alternating between the screams and the singing. It just comes together really nicely. And then there's a really great guitar solo, and it just really stands out to me. Track number 14, In Loving Memory, which is only a demo version, which really bums me out, because this track would have been amazing if they had applied the same production to it that they did the rest of the tracks on this album. And what's really interesting about this is that the guitar solo in this really stands out to me sounding a lot like Sinister Gates from Avenged Sevenfold and it sort of has that really catchy melodic tone that he has on his guitar playing. It's just a really interesting thing. And then overall the guitars on this track are so melodic and I just really enjoy it. And like I said, I'm a little bit bummed out that they didn't do a full studio version of the track because it would have been amazing. And finally track number 15, which is actually a track they released back in 2013 after Fever was sort of not really received well, they went and released this really super thrashy track, which sounds a lot like what they went for on Venom. It's just a really amazing track. It's just so thrashy and perfect mix of screams and singing that really calls back to the old school bullet days. And it's just a really 
awesome track and a great way to conclude the bonus version. Anyway, that's my discussion of the tracks themselves. Now uh, let's jump right into the band members. First up, we'll talk about Matt Tuck on vocals. He has that perfect blend of screams and sings, singing that he did on their first two albums. When sort of the singing sort of took more precedence in Fever and Temper Temper to sort of bring back a lot of the, the heavy, screamy type of stuff. Even though there's still a more focus on melodic singing than on screams, there's still a very nice blend of the two of them. And then he's just got a really great... Uh, unique sounding voice I always recognize on the singing and then just really heavy powerful guttural screams that sort of juxtaposed to his more melodic singing and just comes together really nicely for a great vocal performance and there are some moments like on uh, uh, The Heart of the Heart where he uh, sort of does a more soft melodic type of singing in the middle of the song sort of mixing things up a bit to keep things a little bit interesting there so I really enjoy that and then Padge on, guitar, on lead guitar and uh, Matt Tuck on rhythm guitar. There's just so many great thrashy riffs throughout this whole album. There's just so much energy, powerful thrashy riffs, and then a lot of melodic stuff like on Skin or uh, You Want a Battle, Here's a War, or Venom where they have a really great melodic, uh, clean-sounding guitar tone that sort of mix in with the uh, thrashy stuff and just comes together really nicely. And then there's a lot of great guitar solos like uh, On Skin in particular and Pariah that have these really thrashy, shreddy, melodic solos that sort of really remind me of the stuff they did back on The Poison and on Scream Aim and Fire, that really melodic yet really shreddy type of solo that I really enjoy hearing from this band. And then Finally, we talk about uh, Moose on the drums. He's just got a really great drumming talent, and he's just playing all this crazy, thrashy stuff throughout this entire album. It's just really great drumming. There aren't too many moments that really stood out to me as being like, holy crap, this is amazing, but there wasn't any bad moments either. But all in all, all, in all really great, uh, uh, fast-paced, hectic drumming. And a good mixing in of more pullback, simplistic stuff when called for, like on Venom, where there's a more slower, melodic type of track. And then, of course, Jay James has left the band, so he's no longer playing bass. And this is the, his first performance, or his first, the first album they released that he is not performing bass on his album. So Matt Took did uh, came in and uh, wrote the bass lines for this uh, album and recorded them. There's nothing too crazy on bass, but there are a few moments, like I said, on Playing God and on Venom, even when the, they have the more clean guitar tone where the bass really comes through, and it's deviating from the uh, guitars, even though it's not doing anything too crazy different. And one other thing is that it's not really turned up loud in the mix, except for a few exceptions like on Playing God or Venom. And you can kind of notice they're thickening up the guitars, but it, it's not really that present overall, unless you have good headphones or speakers with like a subwoofer or something. But that's just one sort of minor complaint. It's just sort of personally, I like to hear more bass on my metal, but it is what it is. Anyway, that wraps up my discussion of the band members. So with some final thoughts, I think this is a really good return to form for Bullet For My Valentine that really feels like a combination of all the good things from all their past albums into one album that really sort of captures what Bullet For My Valentine is. And I love them for that, that they finally uh, made an album that I've been actually really excited for, and I haven't been this excited for them in back since like high school when I when they first put out a Scream Am Fire, when I was really amped up for that album. And then the next few albums after that were kind of not as good in my opinion. But I think this album is at least as good as Scream Am Fire, although it's probably not as good. This is just personal opinion that I just like The Poison better, and I think it's their best album. But it's still a really amazing album. It's definitely worth checking out. If you're new to this band, this is a great way to get into them. And if you're a longtime fan that's sort of put off by uh, the more recent albums, which sort of went away from their original sound, this is the album for you because it just really feels like an old-school bullet from a Valentine album. And it's definitely worth checking out. Anyway, that wraps up my review. Be sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of my reviews, be sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.